Okay, good morning and uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. I see some green in here. Welcome to the Sanka County Commissioner's meeting on March 17th, 2022. And I'd like to call this meeting in order and we'll start with the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have a uh, prayer, Commissioner Chef. Please, Val. Dear Lord, please watch over and guide us as we go to discuss county business, property, personnel, and issues facing our community here. Uh, please help us to do the best we can for our residents. Uh, give us your wisdom and uh, always help us to do your will. Please uh, protect our brothers and sisters uh, over in the European theater right now as uh, violence ensues. And please watch over uh, your people and help us to find a peaceful resolution. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, well, Commissioner Paradiso, I'd like to offer just one additional uh, St. Patrick's Day prayer this morning. Sure. Very short version of that, since it is St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. Very simply, may you be in heaven an hour before the devil knows you're dead. <laughs> Amen. I'll drink to that. <laughs> okay, roll call. Commissioner Paradiso? Here. Commissioner Chef? Here. Commissioner Kirshner. Here. So for all of you that are new, there's quite a few uh, new people here, Mike. Uh, Commissioner Kirshner is, is here, and it's all legal via Zoom, so he can vote, and he will be participating in the meeting. Welcome to 2022. <laughs> so I will accept a motion to approve the digital audio recording of the previous board session from Thursday, March 10th, 2022, for our regular session. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, minutes and approve the uh, digital and audio recordings. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Prodiesel? Yes. So it's a, a pleasure to uh, start our meeting off with AmeriCorps. Would you like to come up, please? And uh, we'll turn the program over to you and uh, just kind of introduce yourself and do whatever you want to do. If you could stand right over here, it'd be great. You can use the corner if you need. There you go. Thank you, buddy. Yep, you that's, sure that's, our <laughs> like that's our podium. Or we're going to get the podium. That's our podium if you're right at home. So welcome. Thank you. And thank you for having me today. So thank you, commissioners um, and your staff. Shout out to Jimmy. Um, just for having us out today to highlight the service that our RSVP volunteers do day in and day out for this community. Before I forget, as I often do, my name is Ariel Muirhood and I'm the program coordinator. Several of um, those sitting around me in the blue shirts and even more give up their time to help out local food pantries, provide companionship and transportation to isolated and lonely seniors and adults around our community. They help out at local blood drives, they help out at our local school districts, um, and they just do so much more. Their service inspires me, and I am forever grateful for all that they do. I am forever their biggest cheerleader. Before I invite some of them to speak about the good work that they do, I'd love to give you a few statistics of what they did in this last year, especially during the pandemic. A lot of them through Fish and Tiffin Food Pantry, Salvation Army, and so many other partner sites have helped out deliver or hand out 500 meals to different stations across this county. A dozen more have held Help Mountain Seniors either in person or on the phone due to the pandemic that we were all facing. And of course, they helped out a lot of our local school district with our local students still needing some assistance, either just socially or academically through Tippin City Schools. They completed in 2021 over 600 hours during a pandemic this past year. <coughs> but of course, for us, it's not just about the numbers, right? It's about the people that they're serving day in and day out. It's about the people that they're serving and the people who are doing the serving. And so I would love to introduce, and I'm gonna make him talk first since he does it for a living, <laughs> RSVP AmeriCorps senior Ken Jones to share what he does for our program. Ken, if you wanna come next to me in my podium. <laughs> Thank you, welcome. Mm -hmm. Not good. Bring my notes, I didn't know you had notes here. Sure. Either I didn't get a blue t-shirt for the 
AmeriCorps program or I misplaced it. So, <laughs> this thing. And I didn't have a tie like uh, Mr. Zach there. Adam. <coughs> Fifteen months ago, I volunteered to be a RSVP, which is Retired Seniors Program. RSVP. Volunteer Program. Anyway, <laughs> got teamed up and you got to be cautious on the names I use, so I'm just going to use Bob. I met Bob 15 months ago via telephone. I called him at one of the local nursing homes here and spoke with him on the phone. Uh, he had a imagination, if you will. He told me he was relocating from the nursing home to Bettsville. I asked him what address. He didn't know. Hmm. Then he went on to say he was going to Hawaii to buy some property. <laughs> He was taking two women with him. That was on a Sunday. I was concerned. Monday I went out and talked to administration at the place, and they said, yes, he stopped up. He wanted money out of his fund. He wanted to travel to Hawaii, but he just has an imagination. So it was just nice meeting with him. And then uh, flowers. My wife and I take care of Applejack Park. There were some flowers left over, so I took some flowers and mulch to him. He planted them out in the little courtyard there, So and he passed away in three months ago, January of 2022. Other gentleman I met via phone 15 months ago. I'm going to say his name's John. He, this was during the COVID-19, he said being at the nursing home was like being in jail. He said, uh, no visitors, they bring the meals to him and leave right away. Uh, he attends a workshop at School of Opportunity. He said he liked working with cardboard. They finished that job. They had him stringing beads. He liked the cardboard better. So uh, he gave me some of his beads. He wanted the county commissioners and <laughs> Ariel to uh, have some of those. So I'll oh. leave with some beads and yeah. make sure Thank you. Mr. Kirshner gets some there. So. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. And the reason I do it, I was in Boy Scouts. I'm supposed to do one good deed per day. And to me, this visiting with these gentlemen is like giving blood. When I give blood or we give blood, we're helping supposedly three other people. So when I leave out of there, I can walk, I can talk, I can drive away and think of them in a nursing home confined with this COVID-19 for all those months. So I get as much out of it as they do. So hey, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Ken. Yeah. So typically in, um, I would call the normal days, right, we have companionship. And so our seniors go into people's homes, obviously with permission, and they provide a friendship. To them we don't provide any house cleaning or anything like that it is basically that socialization um, if you look at the statistics a lot of our seniors are entering nursing homes due to the socialization their family isn't local and so they want them to be around <coughs> peers or they just want them to be around people right but then we're finding in these nursing homes they don't need that medical care right away but they're suffering at all stages from loneliness and so our volunteers help kind of combat that Either, like Ken said, it started on the phone and sometimes it transfers to being in person. And so that's just one of the many services we offer. <coughs> um, I have two more people that just do a quick shout out. Marilyn, if you are comfortable, um, just coming up and talking about Marilyn has been wearing many hats for our program. She's been helping me with different events. She's keeping my smile on my face behind a mask. And then she's also mentored a lot of our students over at Noble. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Welcome. Off the cuff. Sure. <laughs> I did warn her. I, I was volunteering at St. Mary's for a program for quite a while and I decided um, I wanted to do something different and then they had a volunteer come and talk about the different things you could do at um, Allen Irie and I picked a to be work uh, help with the fluency program at Noble School and it's for um, fourth and fifth graders and it's for students that uh, just need extra help with their reading. And I did that for about, I think, three years it was, and twice a week. And it was, it was really interesting. It very was, it very much was. And um, well, after well after a time, I decided, well, I got to do something different. And it, and it, it, I went, I decided, uh, I got the idea to visit one of my friends <laughs> at um, at the Willows. And then from that, it grew to other ones that I could visit in nursing homes. And I know this from experience, that if you go into a nursing home, oh, I remember when the gospel airs played in the different nursing homes before the yes. pandemic shut everything down. I would go there and they would just love to listen to this music and smile 
you are you shaking your head? I'm glad that you are, because you know what it means. Yeah. Okay. And and then, um, but that's when I realized that that you can walk into a nursing home and just say hello to, but just say hello and they got a big smile. I mean, it's you can just tell. You don't really have to know them exactly, but. You know, so anyway, I started visiting my friend. I, do, I go there at least once a week. She's a high school friend from uh, <clears throat> uh, high school, and but uh, she's at the Willows, and she she realizes she's going to be there in the assisted living. And then I uh, have two or three others that um, two uh, two of them that I've visited. One in her home, and one at uh, Autumnwood. And and now, right now, I have probably on my list of three more. But um, I um, don't get them all every week, but I have intentions of seeing them and, you know, just talking to them, going in and, and just what's new and just, and I don't have a problem with what to say. I, <laughs> my children say I talk too much. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I don't care about that either. <laughs> because I was born this way, I guess. <laughs> anyway, and so, uh, I, that's what I do now. I, well, I visit people in nursing homes and to cheer them up and all of that. And um, I, I have to add this. <laughs> um, I have a, son, a grandson that's in the service. And the other day I was talking to him about what I was going to do. And I says, well, I said, I belong to the Corps, I said, and I'm going to uh, go and make a presentation. <laughs> Dead silence. <laughs> but I was trying to compare myself to him. Yeah. But it, it didn't get no reaction from him. Anyway, that's my story. <laughs> Any questions? Nice job. Thank you. No, it's great. Okay. I guess I do have a question. So um, it looks like you're reading it in fourth grade to kids and you're in a nursing home so your outreach is what you touch yeah so people um, in need. I mean it's, and a lot of it's these, interesting yeah. yeah so um RSVP and AmeriCorps seniors is and if you're proud of AmeriCorps right we're the senior component of that mm -hmm. and so being a federally funded program by 70 percent 30 percent a local match um and so Doing that, we partner with different nonprofits. And so with the grants that we write, we're hitting different performance measures. In Seneca County specifically, that's education. Um, if you look at our schools, two thirds of our students right now are living with one parent or a grandparent at home. Whatever, however that situation happened, they're kind of starting to fall behind that curve. And so education kind of became a big goal for us. Marilyn doesn't know, I mean, she knows everything I don't know, but she didn't go into education. She didn't aspire to be a teacher. And Marsha behind her the same way, right? These are people that just love kids. And these students, it's just they're a little behind that curve or they just need a peer that is, or a peer, I'm sorry, a mentor that is rooting for them. If you talk to our mentors, they become celebrities. If they're found at Walmart, at different grocery stores, these students know every Monday, for example, Marsha or Marilyn might be there to read for them. And it becomes a consistent relationship, which they might not have outside of those walls. And so, yes, it kind of starts with their reading goals, but then it ends up being that relationship. And their attendance soars they, on Mondays. They're there, right? If they have something to look forward to. If it's not education that's, really that's driving them, it's huge, right? Food pantry, food insecurity is another thing in our county that I know you guys see day in and day out. So we pick food pantries to partner with. Um, so we're always looking for nonprofits to partner with. Obviously, they're touching on the loneliness just because we're coming out of this pandemic. We have seen people are watching their TVs and not talking to people outside their walls. That damages their mental health even more huh. than we're seeing before, yeah. right? And so if we can get right. them off Facebook and we can get them off of whatever news channel they're a fan of, and talking to the people in our communities, it levels that stress. You can hear it on the phone. I'm sure Ken, when he was talking to his people at first, they do have that imagination, right? They're anxious, they're nervousness. And I can tell you personally, when I call them a minute to five minutes after you talk to them, it just, you can hear it melt off of them because it's just somebody to talk to. Um, and then transportation's another big thing in this community that we all live on our little farmlands, you know, but we're really struggling to get to different places that would keep us independent at home. So that includes grocery stores, pharmacies. Um, Cindy here, um, I'm going to call you out, but she is one of our, our RSVP volunteer, Michelle. Cindy's also one. So Michelle picks her up at Kiwanis Manor and they go to Salvation Army. 
and sometimes they serve together, sometimes it's just Cindy, and they serve together, and then Michelle drives her home. And so that is a way that she doesn't need to rely on the Opportunity Center to get to point A to point B, but she can still do an activity that's keeping her independent, right? So any nonprofit that's interested in partnering with us, they're welcome to get a hold of me, and we can work it out that way. I'm thankful for her too. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, I I am very thankful for this RSBP because they do a lot in the community. And I and I for one can speak for that because she does take me to get blood work yeah. right away in the morning. Like, like next Wednesday she'll be taking me for blood work and then bring me right back home. And I, I really appreciate those services. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. saying that. It's great work you're all doing, yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's all them. Commissioner yeah. Kirshner, any comment from you? No, just another example of wonderful folks in Seneca County who are willing to volunteer their time and treasure. God bless them. Yeah, like I always say, it's just, this is a great job because we get to see all this and hear this and learn and yeah. it's just amazing so does anybody anybody else want to speak from your Bernard did uh, you want to group? go or do you just want to oh, come on up back? Nice. Sure. So this is Bernard Englehart Bernard is fairly new to our blue crew yeah, if you will right. um, and he just has a few words thank you good morning mm -hmm. I'm right. Bernard Englehart I've only been with the organization about six months so I'm fairly new um, kind of here today to listen and learn <laughs> um, a lot of people that I talked to said, you know, what are you doing? And I volunteered at Mercy Hospital for about 21 years. And the pandemic changed things and I decided I wanted a little more of a challenge. So a lot of people, it once, uh, I think it was some in paper, I contacted Ariel and said, come on up and we'll talk about it if you want to join the organization. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I did. So that was about six months ago. Um, a lot of people ask it, what is RSVP? What does that stand for? Is it some reservation or what is it? <laughs> so, no, it's Retired Senior Volunteer Program. So, um, with the largest network of volunteers in the nation. Wow. So, Never we have a lot that. of resources we can go to and need it. Um, I'm very excited, of course, about getting started doing things, helping people. Uh, whether it's in a nursing home or you know the food pantry or whatever their needs are and actually I remember the first time I uh, volunteered at Mercy Hospital and I came out and the nurse said to me how'd it go today and I said you know it's just wonderful and, and actually I get more out of it than what they do and then it always comes up the question a lot of people say why are you volunteering you don't get paid so why would you do it a lot of people have that attitude unfortunately I said we do get paid it's just the way I explained it's yeah. better for me I go home feeling good and I've done something good so that's always makes you feel good Amen. Um, take a look at my notes here I look at volunteering basically is for today and then tomorrow moving forward with new ideas new things to do and help people so I'm always looking forward to a challenge and always looking forward to helping people because of what it does for me thank you Thanks, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody's so. smiling in here. This is great. <laughs> Anybody else, Ariel? Nope, that would do it. Just one last thing. So the one thing that I am challenging Bernard with, since he does like a challenge, um, is we are currently in the planning stages, in the infancy stages, of planning a volunteer fair for Seneca County. So that is going to take place. I have flyers that you graciously allowed me, so if those in the audience would love a flyer. Um, we are currently in the stages of looking for partners to be at that fair, and so we have emailed all of our partner agencies. But I know, David, I sent an email to the chamber. I also sent out to one for Amy Reinhardt, but any nonprofit that's watching or <coughs> interested in being part of that fair, um, it's free to set up. It's just basically, instead of, we always kind of laugh about the adult trick-or-treating that happens at our other fairs in county, just events and stuff like that, but it is specifically to talk about your need for volunteers, whatever that is. And so a lot of, I know our schools are going to be there, the Salvation Army just confirmed yesterday, um, and different things, so um, Bernard is really kind of taking the steam engine with that, and we're super excited. And that will take place this coming May 17th at the Allen Irie Center. 
It is a two hour event um, and we are just looking forward to it. I should mention the reason there is a donut on the flyer is because donuts will be provided. <laughs> so if you come for nothing else, <laughs> come for the donuts. Um, but guys, just thank you so much uh, for having us out today. Thanks Mike for joining us on Zoom. Um, and yeah, just thanks for honoring our volunteers. I thank them day in and day out, but it's always so nice to hear um, that they're appreciated because they do truly live out our agency's go forth and do good motto. So we do have a uh, proclamation we would like to read and uh, we'd like everybody that's part of RSVP to come forward and stand back here if you will. We'll get a photo and Commissioner Shelf will read the uh, proclamation. Come on up. We thank you for coming. Get out of the way. Are you nervous? I don't know. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I'll get out of the way. Here, you guys, you all get in the mail. Sorry about that, everybody. Now we have a city councilman coming up here in the commissioner's office to see you come up in our chambers. You sit right in that chair, and you guys are all welcome. Thank you. Come on in. And uh, Jimmy, get a good picture yeah, if you would absolutely. for him. And this is your day. Okay, how's the others? Um, Ty, do you want to pull the chairs? Can yeah. you pull the chairs off? It just it doesn't look amazing with the chairs in the front. Okay. Here. Cool, let's take one without the commissioners, then let's put the commissioners in the next one. So, all right, everybody. This one's a better one right here. All right, I'm going to take the picture in three, two, one. And I'm going to take one more in three, two, one. Looks great. Commissioners, go ahead and pop okay. in there. I'll stand behind you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There we go. There we go. I think you like each other. <laughs> okay, guys, ready? We're going to take it in three, two, one. Going to do one more. Three, two, one. Awesome. All right, you want to read the prop? Okay, absolutely. Right here. Yep. Yeah, we can sit, stand, stand, whatever. Stand, he's our uh, reader. He does a he's, good job. He's the designated reader for our team. He would be a good one to go into the schools because he. <laughs> 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 what was your fifty fifth birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Got a while here. Right. So we hear from the commissioner's office. We have a proclamation for you guys. Whereas service is a hallmark of the American character and has a unique ability to bring people of all backgrounds together in a common cause. And throughout our history, citizens have stepped up to meet our most pressing challenges of the day by volunteering in their communities. And whereas AmeriCorps provides opportunities for more than a quarter of a million Americans to serve their country through services and nonprofits, schools, public agencies, and a community and faith-based groups across the country. And whereas in Seneca County, AmeriCorps members and AmeriCorps senior volunteers of various ages and backgrounds help to meet local needs at a variety of locations in Tiffin, Bostoria, and surrounding communities by responding to the COVID-19, tutoring and mentoring children and youth, supporting veterans and military families, combating the, opio the opioid em epidemic, restoring the environment, and helping alleviate food insecurity. And whereas AmeriCorps members and AmeriCorps seniors volunteer and encourage collaboration and partnerships, leveraging millions of volunteers in service and acquiring the support of business, foundation, and other local partners to increase the effectiveness in their, in, <coughs> in their initiatives. And whereas through their service, AmeriCorps members and AmeriCorps senior volunteers strengthen the lives of their families, communities, and the Seneca County area as a whole. And therefore, be it resolved that this Board of Commissioners of Seneca County, Ohio, hereby designate March 13th of 2000, 2022 as AmeriCorps Week in Seneca County and urge citizens to thank AmeriCorps members and alumni and AmeriCorps senior volunteers for their service and to find their own ways to give back to their communities. March 13th through the 19th, 2022 is AmeriCorps Week. In witness thereof, we the Board of Seneca County Commissioners have hereunto set our hand to this proclamation this 17th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2022, Commissioners Mike Kirshner, Anthony Paradiso, and Tyler Schuff. Thank you for Thank all you, you do. volunteers. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks. Okay. Thanks for the beans. Over. Kill it. I only gave him the Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You want to do that now? I can. That way. Yeah. Enjoy. Hi. Appreciate it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Would like to, I'm yeah. going to give you a little information about what I just gave you. Okay. Uh, okay. So, oh, yeah. Can I give, I still give some about 30 seconds. My shop. You're in good hands. Okay. Thank, Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. I'm head back. Great. Area. Yep. Excuse me, sir. Oh, this is crazy. Okay. Pause here a couple seconds. Thank you again, once again. Thank you. What'd you say? I left you the paper. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. I wrote it in paper all the time. You look familiar. I'm sure I've seen you at the hospital. I'm sure I have. Oh, yeah. My goodness. Thank you. You have a smiley face for everything. And I'll get with you on the paper. You're the wizard. Well, I just like doing stuff. I didn't do it. You know, I'd be sitting home. I've been retired for 21 years. and. So be, be, that was the quote of the day. Yeah, people really. say I'm not getting paid. Yeah, I get paid yeah. Real well. People, I mean, they're serious. Yeah. They're my friends. And they are serious. All my negative about it. I'm doing anything like that. So just get to it. Up. <laughs> Thank God you. bless you. Yeah. So we'll continue. We have a uh, representative from the Railroad Museum here. Well, my name is Fostoria Rail Preservation, Preservation Society. It's a very long name. My name is Ellen Gator. Thank you. And because of Fostoria, it's Wood Seneca and Hancock County. But mm -hmm. to let you know, I live in Wood County, but I can see Hancock County out my front window, actually. <laughs> okay? Because it's a half mile down the road. So, and but the preservation I, is located where? We are at the L.E. and W. Depot on mm -hmm. West North Street beside Flip and Jimmy's in Fostoria. Mm. In fact, we received the, the uh, depot from a Henry H. Geary Jr. Memorial mm. Foundation grant. And I think that was about in 07 or 08 when we received that. But we have been a nonprofit for about 20 years. And I've been involved in it since day one and before. The reason is the city wanted to build the rail park. And you had to understand what a rail park is. I use the analogy, if you had a football field and had nine-yard lines, you really wouldn't have a very good game because you could not accomplish what the game is supposed to do. So we had to have the city understand when they were going to build a rail park, what should be on that property? So we got involved, and I stood in front of all these guys and said, here, fill out this survey. And when a train goes by, is like the last two minutes of a tie game. You don't bother anybody because they're intent on that. But we found out what a rail park should have. We gave the city 200 of those copies. And they applied for a grant. And of the million dollars to build the park, they got $803,000 of federal money for that park. So that's where we just kind of said, well, we need to continue. So we had to have a depot in order to have a location. Mm -hmm. And we have events during the year that we continue on. But the actual rail park, I love it. It's a great place for people to come. You've been there when we opened up the caboose. In fact, we're opening up on Saturdays on nice days. That's great. Yes, it, from I think it's 11 to 1, and we have it open because a lot of people don't know what a caboose is. Yeah. The, they don't have a clue as to it or the railroads and anything. So that's where I started getting involved in Fostoria. And I chair all of our events, so my house has piles of the different projects that I'm on. And I also work with RSVP because I've been involved with Project MORE, which is a reading program since 06. And I also, because of this rail related, I am an Operation Lifesaver volunteer, which is a national organization. Mm -hmm. And that was started in 72, but I've been involved in it since 06 as a certified volunteer. and. I, as you can tell, I don't let people stand in my way if I want to do something legally. Like a train coming through. Yes, you, you better stay back off the tracks. And I do bug people and they don't like me, but sometimes but I think it's also a man could say something and it's okay, but if a woman says it, they really don't like it sometimes. And I don't care. <laughs> Have you ever had that happen to you? No, I know, I know. It's, it's only me, yes, ha uh ha. -huh. 
but I just, I enjoy doing things because when you don't get paid, they really can't stop you as much. Is that right? Yeah, tell you, what to do. <laughs> you know, yes, yes, and I, and I enjoy doing this. And my husband thought I was nuts. And I told him I did twice as much because he doesn't want to do anything with it. So, and he understands, but I do. It's just part of my family and everything. But the rail in Fostoria, if you didn't have trains, Fostoria wouldn't have been there. And there wouldn't be the commerce. Can you imagine what things would cost if we didn't have trains hauling everything? With the cost of today and, every, and such. So, but what I do is the operation lifesaver, and I am the I am the number two in the state, as far as vocal. Can you imagine that? <laughs> but uh, I enjoy doing it, and um, I just gave you some flyers because we're having our railroad dinner in May, and our speaker is going to be our state coordinator, Alan Stouter, and he's going to talk a little bit about what his job was with Norfolk Southern when he was working for them. But he's also, I want him to go over a lot of the different programs we have because the programs are based on your age. So you don't talk the same program to kindergartners and elementary as you do high school and adults. They also have a commercial program. And that's what I think the county commissioners should get involved in. Also with the township trustees because you have drivers who drive over tracks. And it seems like People don't know what stop signs sometimes, and they don't realize that a red light means you're supposed to stop if you can, not if you want to. Am I right? See? But anyway, that's what I would like to do. And Alan's going to be at the meeting, and I think it would be great because then you, at your level, can ask the township and the, and the county people to get some training on train safety because everybody should have it. It's like driver training. You just need to sometimes be reminded about the safety factors of it, but every three hours somewhere in the United States, something, people, person, or thing is on a train track where they shouldn't be and a train is going through. And, and people go, well, we need rail grade crossings to have the gates. 60% of the time, it is when someone goes around the gate. So it doesn't matter whether you have the stop sign or the stoplight, people are still going to go through it in the same thing with the gates. So that's what I do and I love it. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about with this. But have you ever reached out to the people that run that safety city? I know they, I'm they, they do, they, No, I'm not in, I do the one in Fostoria, and I do it up in Toledo too. Yes, yes. If you have one here, let me know about it, and I will do it. Don't yes. I have to know who's on city council, I can give you her number, maybe you guys can collaborate. Okay. So they do safety city, yes. maybe tie in the railway to it as you well. You can email me, it's right at the bottom there. That is me, so. Oh, you know what? I didn't put my email address on there. Oh, ha, ha. oh well, call my number and leave a message. The 435-1781 is my number. 1781? So, yeah, that's me. I have a snarky message, so just leave a message. And if you're a, if you're a scam caller, I don't bother calling you back. So. Okay. They aren't calling anymore, I don't, which is wonderful. But anyway, this is what I like to do. We have the railroad dinner. And yep. really, I would love for you to come because people need more information on safety. Our rail festival, that's in fact we're having our 20th year. Then we have Santa at the Depot. Last year we had 75 Christmas trees, three, three, 36 of them were six foot to nine foot in height and we spent 450 hours decorating. I spent 150 of my own decorating so you need to come to the Depot. It's for adults as well as children. Then we have a wine and cheese which is our age group who we can spend <laughs> You know, we have two different nights where we have it in there with all mm -hmm. the lights off and just Christmas lights on. So mm -hmm. that's what I do in my spare time. It's wonderful. So, okay? Uh, thank sure. you. Just a quick question yeah. or something yeah. to throw out there. I was actually thinking of you the other day. I, I get on Facebook Marketplace every once in a while just to see what's on there. It's kind of uh -huh. like Craigslist, but yes. over in Fremont, there's a train depot for sale right now. I think, yes. it's, I, think it's, I shared it with it Renee, a, I shared it with uh, Mayor Keckler. Yes. You got to figure out a way to haul it or move it. But I just know you have a very mighty group, and you guys got that caboose over there. Be pretty the cool to have that. The biggest depot. problem is the depots in Fostoria were just recently torn down, and one of them, the New York Central one, is now or was owned by CSX. And I'm just going to say it: railroads don't care about anything historic, especially if it's New York Central and this is CSX, because all they look at is the bottom line. So I understand. We had tried to move that years ago, uh, 
and we thought about putting it at the rail park. Now remember, the rail park's owned by the city. Exactly. And what the guys wanted at the park was the visibility to see the trains. So the caboose, I mean, is there, but it's in the center, so you can still see, and it's high enough to where you can view things. But had we put a depot on the property, it would have been like blocking the field mm -hmm. for a football game. Hmm. You, you know, but it would be nice if there would be a place to put it. I totally understand, mm -hmm. because Bob Lorenz is from Fremont, and he's... He and his wife were the ones that told Teresa that Lee and I an awful lot of information. So, and he passed away. But yes, I know what depot you're talking about. I've been there. So, yes, Bob knows all the history of it. It's hard finding places. It's hard getting things like that moved. Mm -hmm. You know, because we had, yeah, we had tried, but we couldn't do it. We just couldn't do it. The New York Central Tower, the one up on Jackson Street, it's gone. Mm -hmm. I won't go into it. It was not a good day when I... Found out I'm about ask it. Commissioner, so. Kir Commissioner Kirshner, any comment from you? Yeah, I'm sorry, getting off mute here. Yep. Uh, no, just like, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's another attraction, and, you know, people obviously are passionate uh, about railroads uh, in the area. Uh, another fine example is Bellevue, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've been to a number of times, but. Um, God bless the folks for working hard and, and keeping it uh, functional over there and allowing allow the next generation to see what train, what the history of trains really is. Yeah, that's what we try to do. Thank and the you. thing is, if everybody liked the same thing, it'd be really crowded one place. <laughs> and we don't all like the same thing. See, some people like blue shirts, some people like green shirts, <laughs> some like some like Ohio State, some like Michigan. You know, but they're allowed to. They're allowed to do that. So, but I'm involved with the city park because they don't have enough employees to do it. So, I love mowing the grass, and I'm getting ready soon to, to mow the grass. So, you meet a lot of people. Lots. In fact, we have sold four homes in Fostoria to people that have moved here to watch the trains because they can afford to have a house rather than stay in a hotel all the time they come because they can watch any time they want. In fact, a couple just are coming from Erie, Pennsylvania, which really has much more severe weather than we do. So they, they're going to be able to handle this quite easily. Just, so. uh, we've we got to watch your time, but yes, what is I'm the, uh, uh, I think you told me once, is there a train that goes through there every two minutes, three minutes? Um, today, okay, trains are longer now. What yeah. they have, and remember, I don't work for the railroads. I just, I'm kind of a marketer. Yes, 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 marketer. And there used to be 120 trains a day, then went down to 90. Now it's about 70 because they are longer. Have you noticed that you might wait at a crossing longer? Mm -hmm. That's because the railroad is cutting back on their employees. And they have a DPU, which is a distributed power unit. That is that other engine that is farther the down. Oh, what the they middle. do is they put the heavier loads at the front, the cars, then they put the DPU, and then they put more of the lighter weight or empty ones at the back. Sometimes they even have one at the very back. We are very flat around here. We don't have to have the power to go up grades as you do in other areas. Mm -hmm. And they do, they've had that in other places all the time. In fact, they would have one at the very end to, uh, like a roller coaster. If you didn't control the speed of a roller coaster, same thing with the train. Mm -hmm. So 70, that's what the, 70 a day then? About 70, yes. Okay. And we have rail stream and we have virtual rail fan have cameras there. So if you want to watch for free, you can pull that up. Because some people love to watch trains. About three every hour. Yeah. yeah. We had a guy from Pennsylvania, he'd stand in front of the camera and wave, and that way so his wife knew where he was. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, see, that, that's, I love that. And there's a lot of people that are very good friends. So, okay. Thank I've you. been thanks, enough. Thanks, you do. Sure. Thanks for coming. I love it. And again, a woman involved in this. It's, <laughs> Thank you. And some people like it, some don't, but I don't care. So, thank you so very we'll much. Have, uh, we'll have we'll save all these in our county 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 okay, yes. But uh, nothing today. After the meeting, I think nothing you'll today. enjoy talking to Alan because the programs are free and people need to be updated on safety. You don't wait till something happens and then go, oh, guess what we should do. Commissioner Schaff, any uh, re commissioner report from you? Yeah, we have the uh, Township Trustee Association meeting tonight. Uh, spoke with John Monk from WT a while earlier this week about our rural broadband, so keep moving forward with those plans, exciting stuff. 
um, Regional Planning Policy Committee uh, this week, and then also we're going to be discussing the Ag Building. But other than that, just uh, going through a lot of uh, discussions here. I think our, our David, Zach, and Adam here, uh, Bill, you were there. You were there, really, all four of you. Uh, I thought that meeting Friday was pretty, pretty uh, exciting. You could feel it in the room. Uh, Representative Latta was there, uh, and. Uh, so we look forward to get this study completed by summer. So I really don't have anything to add. Commissioner Kirshner, got you down on old business for SB 52. Plus, I think you wanted to uh, uh, put a slide or two up. So I'll turn everything over to you if that's okay. And we can include uh, uh, old business SB 52 because I believe that falls under your explanation. Okay. <coughs> Well, Senate Bill 52, just as a reminder, yeah. is uh, the Ryan Key bill uh, that talks about uh, wind turbine uh, projects and, and solar projects uh, across the state of Ohio. Evidently, Apex has reapplied uh, for their permits that have been turned down. And uh, we just wanted to make sure, like Stacy, I think that we have indeed sent from the prosecutor our letter uh, supporting Senate Bill 52. <laughs> yes, right? yes, and she confirmed it with them that they have received it. Okay, so that's really all uh, all there is about that. We just wanted to make sure that we could get the hearing it's today, uh, so we wanted to make certain that uh, all of our signing board uh, had our comments and knew where the commissioner stood as it relates to the Ryan Key bill. Okay. So that I think that's all there is on SP 52, mm -hmm. unless there's something I'm missing. Is that good, Jimmy? Nope, I think that's fine. We're still in under commissioner reports, so you can continue if you if you like. Sure, sure. Uh, there, there has been a lot of discussion, and there has been ongoing discussions of uh, uh, kind of a uh, a key group uh, steering committee that are looking at uh, converting the uh, uh, current East Tower into uh, offices that would hold the recorder, treasurer, auditor, uh, the people that are now in the, uh, what we call now the RTA building, the old bank building on the corner of South Washington Street and um, Market. Part of our memorandum of understanding with the city uh, when we did the courthouse uh, was to try to find a way to um, get that building out of the center of downtown Tiffin because it just doesn't fit the landscape. Um, so we've been working towards getting that done. As it turns out, we have a private investor who is willing to match the county's funds to the tune of uh, approximately $3 million. Um, so that would be uh, money coming from the private sector. Uh, at this point, we are in the middle of submitting projects for the state capital budget. Uh, Senator Reinecke feels comfortable with this project and feels that it has a decent chance to uh, be partially at least This is, again, this has been an ongoing, uh, ongoing. David Zach uh, kind of put that together after that the county would be, the, the total project's gonna be someplace like $6.8 million. And that's considering 30% contingencies for both the owner and the builder. So we build in some uh, additional costs that may occur. Uh, Craig Gossman uh, from Gossman Associates has put some together some renderings and some schematics uh, that I think are uh, uh, available, and Jimmy will put up here in a second. But uh, the funding would come from the county, uh, it would come from private investment, some hopefully would come from the state, and it will come from the sale of the property that is currently the RTA building and the parking lot. We have ordered an appraisal on that building, we have had discussions with the city regarding their desire to purchase that building. If the city would decide that they didn't want to do that, then I guess what we would try to do is, is retail it and see if anyone else is interested in that corner. Our hope is that the city does indeed uh, 
purchase that, that, that corner and therefore would own a parking lot and what would hopefully become green space uh, where that building is. So Jimmy, if you've got some of that stuff uh, you can put up on the screen, I'd appreciate it. Just let me know what you want to see, Mike. Well, I just kind of, we can flip through these pretty quickly there. Okay, let me. Hmm. I wanted to make certain that everyone knew how far along this process um, and uh, to let you know that we have thought about a number of different combinations as it relates to where the auditor, where the treasurer, where the uh, recorder might be. Also part of the building, a significant portion of the building will be used for uh, some type of the, uh, the arts. Uh, it would be a story called um, uh, information. Uh, there would be art displays on local uh, artists. It would uh, also contain uh, workshops for uh, kids and adults as it relates to uh, uh, the history of Seneca County. Hopefully there will be some cooperation between the museum and the building to have some displays from time to time. There are just a number of different ideas uh, that we're talking about. So all these schematics, the reason that I bring them to you is because I wanted to show how far down the road we are with this project. Uh, next week, we will actually have some artist renderings of how not only these tower might look, but also how the corner of South Washington and market might look um, uh, as, as a landscape line, as opposed to the building that's there now. <clears throat> Keep in mind, we've talked about trying to update that building, uh, the current RTA building, but estimates are in the range of $1.5 million uh, to either put a brick facade on that or to change the configuration so that it um, blends, for lack of a better word, with the, uh, with the downtown architecture. So even though $3 million does sound like a lot of money uh, to renovate these tower, our portion, if you consider the fact that it would take a million five to put the our current RTA building uh, in a position that it would uh, that it would blend with the with local architecture, that number uh, just becomes smaller as we continue to talk about things. <clears throat> the other thing to consider uh, is that we now have a willing uh, representative in Gary Click, a willing senator, William Heineke, a willing private investor put up significant dollars and we have some um, availability of excess funds because of the RP and because of other factors that are happening right now we are in a position to be able to do this financially because of those things if we don't take this opportunity at this point uh, certainly the stars will never align as they are now and the project would probably never get done so it's just a question of uh, whether we want to take the leap. And I think that this would be a transformational project as it relates to the downtown Tiffin area. Uh, Jimmy, there's one picture there that shows the atrium, uh, which was the final picture that I sent you that would give you kind of a rendering of what each tower might look like. Can you find that? Um. Those are examples of atriums. That came on under a separate email, Jim. Yeah, it's that first one I sent you, Stacy. If you all right, let me find it. See if you have that. Yep, I think I closed that one because I thought it was different. Me too. Did you send these to me, Jimmy? Uh, I just got them like three minutes before yeah. the meeting. Okay. I will send them. So you will. Good time. Yeah. First time. It's the uh, same. Let me find mm -hmm. it quick. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Now all this information that was had that presented earlier, and all the he said that discussed uh, his yeah. cutting uh, out my but just kind of these are kind of we'll look at uh, the atrium on the back that would be required for handicap access uh, that back is basically where the uh, the parking lot is now a portion of it 
So I will have much more detail next week. Uh, but I did want to, we have to submit to the state of Ohio our priorities as they relate to cap, state capital funding. I'm getting an echo here, Jimmy, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I think our, we're having some connection issues. I think maybe you may be kind of far away from your router. That could be it. Or we're, we're okay, Mike. It should be a, all we, right. We got you. It's a little echo, but we, we understood you. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so so we have to uh, speak in a united voice if we can to the state folks to let them know what our priorities are when we request state funding. Uh, we have a set of capital budget items that we want to do that are separate from the state budget items. I, I don't want to get those two confused. We have some ARP money that's available to do some projects on a county level. This money uh, would be uh, what we're asking for some state matches with. <clears throat> so they are two separate issues. Again, as I had stated earlier, we want to make certain that we use one-time money for one-time projects. So I'm pleased to you know, land sign project for the city of Tippin and for Seneca County. So I would like to be able to submit to uh, the state folks, uh, both Highbridge, who represents us down in Columbus, and Senator Reinecke's office, and Representative Click's office, <laughs> this project uh, is one that we consider to be uh, further along as it relates to our preparation uh, to get this project done. We are almost at the point where there could be some architectural drawings. In fact, those could be those could be uh, ready by the time the, the uh, representatives have to present it, which is a couple of weeks away. So that's pretty much my presentation today. To what tune does uh, our local representation think that they can bring back home here? Or does it just depend on the project? The, the question is how much he said? Yeah, to what tune do they think they can bring back to the area, or does it depend on the project? Is that money? How much money? Yeah, it, it depends on the project. I mean, again, at this point in time, if the county uh, would decide that they could invest $3 million, we I mean, are a private investor in that same range. And if that corner of South Washington Street and uh, Market Street gets us somewhere between four and five hundred thousand, which I think is where the uh, appraisal is going to come in, uh, we're we're virtually there uh, as far as being able to fund uh, the fund the East Tower project. Anything that we would get from the state, anything that would be added as a partnership with Terra Tech or Vanguard Sentinel or any other groups would be uh, added to. Uh, the pot and make our investment be, need to be somewhat less. Did we get the appraisal back yet on the RTA? As far as I know, we have not. We, the, the gentleman has been here to do the appraisal. Uh, I called this morning to get an answer, but uh, I assume that that would be, I'm sure that will be here by next week. Uh, at least I believe it will. So I think where we're at now, commissioners, are that uh, Mike Ditto is preparing uh, several of our ask projects for the capital budget um, we talked about let's submit them and then let the legislature kind of decide what they felt they could get through but i think now you're asking that we uh, rate these projects and, and i'm not against that i would like to wait till the 24th when you're back and we go through uh, the 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 whole project and uh but we still have mike ditto continue putting everything together yeah he would he would like it today yeah yeah so i mean i, right. I well, think we all agree we're submitting it right and it's one of our top two projects so i think i think we got a consensus but um so I, i'm not sure if that is that kind of okay with you is that what you're saying or uh, no, what, what I'm saying at this point in time is, at least from the conversations I've had with folks in the state, is that they need to know that there's a unified unified voice coming from whatever county it is uh, that people are submitting capital projects. So, uh, you know, we certainly can submit more than one, but they need to have a clear uh, understanding as to 
which one we believe that we would like them to work on the hardest and again which one has the highest odds of getting funded according to senator reineke his thoughts are that this project probably has the highest probability but they won't know that until they take it in now understand they are getting these projects as of today uh, which gives them a couple of weeks then to prepare for them to go to the committee so i think that another week is, is uh, too long of a procrastination if you will uh, for us to really get uh, the message uh, to to them that we have to get to them, if we're not, if we're not united that this is the project that we want to uh, move forward, then we need to say that out loud. And I I personally uh, see this as the number one project with the the highest odds of approval. But if that's not the sense of the other two commissioners, then. Uh, we need to look at another project that we can all get behind. I think there's been some talk about rating these projects. Uh, and uh, if that's the case, then uh, we ought to do that today or tomorrow. Make certain that we get these down to the state. Hey, Mike, I have a question for you. So this is my first capital budget as far as it pertains to the state. In the past, we normally rank them one, two, three, and then the state kind of lets the chips fall where they may. I mean, we can we can rank them one, two, three. But I mean, sometimes don't they pick number two or number? They don't always take number one. I guess is that that's my question. Is that true? Yeah. No, that's right. I mean, I, you know, again, you know, I know the it's an old saying, but you got to shoot the ducks that are flying. Whatever uh, we we submit the projects, we let them know what our priorities are. And the last time around, I think the number two project was the one that uh, ended up getting funding. Uh, but I mean, that's something that they have to put together and work on. Yeah, so my, my initial comment would be, I think we have two, we have two uh, separate issues. However, they do come together. One is we are asked to submit our capital projects to the state of Ohio. We have not said yes or no with the East Tower as far as the county commissioners are concerned. I think you're doing a good job of, of working in and bringing more and more information. Um, so if for some reason East Tower doesn't happen and this becomes our number one priority, that would be my only question. But then the flip side is we probably don't do East Tower if, if we get there without the grant. So, um, I, you know, that's kind of a, a it just like I'm not prepared to say yes, I want to do East Tower. I mean, I, I Commissioner Kirsch has been working hard on it. I do have some questions. I thought, and we're going to do that 24th. But if we wanted to, uh, you know, get something down there, um, we can. Can we take a? Can we just? Uh, how do you want to do this? Mike Diddle's working on on the projects. He just needs to rate them by tomorrow, right? Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about the the other project? To uh, we we have uh, we the commissioners have a project. I know TSEP, you have a, there's other projects, but the second project will be a, a, an EMS um, ask. Uh, Sentinel slash Vanguard is starting a fire EMS program, and uh, they are going to take it down to the high school level, um, and. Uh, they want to start this in, at Sentinel in Sandusky, Seneca County, and they want to start this in, uh, at Vanguard in Sandusky County. Uh, the startup for that project, I think, is around $850,000. And uh, Greg and their board have asked us uh, and the Sandusky County commissioners to uh, contribute $350,000 one time uh, for equipment and, and for um, some uh, facility renovation. They already have in place, um, I'm gonna call it, uh, it's, I'm gonna call it law enforcement, um, but it's criminal justice, that kind of thing. And then if we add fire EMS to it, then Sentinel Vanguard would create an academy, a public services academy. Um, uh, the fire departments are part of this. I thought about it and learned something, I guess, commissioners, I didn't really realize. So I went to the uh, 
our radio meeting. Um, we have 10 volunteer fire departments in our county, two city fire departments, 17 different fire departments. So when there's a call, when there's a fire, a mutual aid, two, three, four fire departments respond, they need people. And there's a shortage of people at the volunteer level, there's a shortage of people at the paid city level, there's clearly a shortage of people at the MS level. So we love the program and, um, um, you know, we we talked about it a couple different ways here, but uh, in the meeting with uh, Assistant Dusty County Commissioners, they liked it, so that's one of our submissions for a total of 350000 That would make that happen. They would start that right away, and um, that would produce 15 to 20 students per year in each county. So, uh, so we would have a constant flow of graduates um, they may go to Finlay, they may move to Marion, they may do something else in life, but they may want to be volunteers. And they would have their certificates and they can continue to progress. And so we love the program. So that's, that's a $350,000 ask. Um, and uh, I think we've kind of dialed back our other requests. Um, we had others, but I think those are our two yeah, I think the others, I think, were a little confused with what our local yeah. projects so were to, compared to, to what we were going to submit with the state. Just to help clarify, Commissioner yeah. Kirshner, so uh, we're in a capital budget discussion, and there's, there's really, I'm going to say, three pots of money. There's the general fund, the operating county has a capital budget, and then we have this ARP money, and now we have this grant state money and this is what state capital state capital budget that comes around every couple of years and this is what uh, Commissioner Kirsten talked about and I'm talking about. Um, well, but the only thing that I would add to this yeah, at this point in time is you know I think that the uh, I think that the education piece is, is certainly a wonderful idea. Uh, we've been talking about this for maybe 60 days or so. Um, uh, it's been a, 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 a great thought process, and I'm glad that it's cooperation with Sedusky County on this as well. But I think that project is going to happen, uh, if not today, you know, sometime in the future, because we've got enough people behind it. The project, as it relates to East Tower, if we don't take the opportunity to do it now with the funds that are available and with the willingness we have in the private sector, that's probably never going to happen. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it, uh, right now is uh, obviously uh, an opportunity and a moment in history uh, that we could uh, do something transformational. Um, and I believe that the educational piece, if everybody continues to work hard on it, will uh, occur at some point, possibly not the next school year, but maybe the school year after. Um, and uh, that will happen with or without state funding, most probably the tower will not happen with or without state funding. Was the community kitchen part of the discussion too, if I'm, memory serves me correctly, was that in the top three or four as well? I think that was a... That's not our, that would be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a, that, that's a uh, Santa County Tiffin discussion. But for the commissioner's request, um, I think we've separated. Right, is that correct, Commissioner? That's a good question, actually. That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, we would certainly write a letter of support. I think that uh, we did. Uh, Mr. Zach, was, was, uh, Mr. Zach is putting that together uh, to uh, uh, to the state uh, capital budget request, but um, it's not a county project. I mean, obviously, we're in support of that. We we sold them some land, and we've done whatever we could to make certain that they had the ability to make that happen, but. Um, it's not a county project. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, so we want to, uh, I guess what we're asked, the three of us are asked is to rate uh, East Tower one or two and the EMS either one or two because we're just talking internally about our two projects. I think that's where we've narrowed this down to. Um, and I, I, I don't disagree that's a transformational project. I don't disagree that 
and that was my comment that you know unless they get unless we get the match or the grant from the state it, it's definitely going to hinder the project um i guess my only thing is i'm just i just i'm i'm just not a hundred percent ready to say let's do it so um what's our absolute deadline drop dead date as far as having our project submitted i mean so for me i guess seeing the presentation on the screen this is the first time i've had to see it and i guess us discuss it in person which i think these discussions are good i, I guess i had a lot of questions but i mean when's our absolute drop dead date is when we when we need to have these projects submitted and prioritized to our uh, state officials I know Mike Ditto had asked tomorrow. that we do it yeah, today. Yeah, by tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right, tomorrow noon, yeah. So, uh, I've got a lot of questions. Should I be I mad? Mean, yeah, let's talk about that on the 24th. I mean, unless that's going to change. I, I thought I thought we were going to I thought we were going to kind of have these discussions on the 24th. Um, I just have a lot of questions. I don't know if I should email them or if we want to spend three hours going over it today. I just. I don't. Um, can we get? Is it? Would it, can we get? Can we get everything to you by noon? The three of us. What we want to do? Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I guess I can work with Mike. I'd like to um, make a call or two, and um, I think we can get this done Jimmy, by noon. There is a uh, by noon, Mike. Tomorrow. Tomorrow noon. Uh, well, Jim, Jimmy, there is. Uh, when, when is our next uh, East Tower meeting scheduled? It's next the twenty third. Wednesday. It's Wednesday. the twenty third. Twenty. Wednesday, I think. Which is Wednesday? Yep. Okay. Oh, Mike Ditto's on if uh, you need him to. I mean, I guess. Okay. Comment. Well, I mean, the you other gotta allow him to. Some of these we might not have answers to, though, too. I just. I, I thought we really had till next week to kind of get everything ironed out. Like, I'm not ready to make an informed decision right today. I mean, maybe. Uh, Mike Ditto's on. Mike, can you clarify? I mean, I. We were going with the deadline of today initially, correct? Yeah, thanks, Stacy. And I apologize, I was in another meeting and I was just able to get on now, so I have not heard the discussion over the last hour. But um, so the, the deadline for the county and for every every entity in Ohio to submit the projects to their legislators for consideration is tomorrow at the close of business, March 18th, and then. From there, the legislators have two weeks uh, until about April 1st to take all of the projects from their respective districts, prioritize what they want to see, and then they provide those projects to their um, leadership in both the House and the Senate. Um, it's, it's the way the process works is like that because, for instance, in the situation where you have Senator Bill Reinecke, he represents seven counties. So all seven counties are likely going to be providing him uh, projects for consideration. His office is going to take the next two weeks, starting after tomorrow, look at all of the projects that he has presented to him, and then he'll rank his priorities for submission to the capital budget in consideration um, to the next step. Um, so it's really incumbent upon us that at a bare minimum, tomorrow, by the close of business, we submit to Senator Reinecke and Representative Click a uh, list of the projects that Seneca County supports. Um, I would advise that um, they be prioritized, um, number one and number two. However, if that's not achievable and that does happen, where there's often a, a split um, that, that can happen in anywhere in the state, um, then I would just say that these are the two, three, four, however many projects that are supported by the commission as a whole. Okay, so Mike, if if we if we score this number one, and then after continuing due diligence, because you know that's really what we're doing, we continue to move the East Tower project forward till we decide we're either doing it or not doing it, and mm -hmm. we haven't decided yet. So if we apply and make this number one, and then for the reasons you've outlined, and then for some reason down the road, it, the East Tower doesn't happen, what happens then? Great question. So there's kind of two paths here. Number one, you could just, you, over the next, the incumbent thing upon us now is that we submit something to the legislators by tomorrow. If you decide actually in the next two weeks that you're going to reprioritize things uh, or move things around within whatever projects you submit, we can, do, we can have those conversations with your state senator and your state representative. That's no problem. It does happen a lot 
that in a capital budget, uh, sometimes things, uh, the projects don't go off as planned. Um, and so there's either delays in the project or the project gets uh, scrapped. You don't want to have that happen, of course. Nobody wants that anywhere in Ohio, but uh, it does happen. And the state would either retract the funding for that project because it's, it's basically they hold on to it until they spend it and give it to the local entity. Um, or it could be repurposed for another project at a later date. Um, if you can avoid doing that, I would, uh, because you don't want to have the, um, you don't want to have the perception that, that projects aren't ready to go. Uh, Commissioner Perdy, so just as a compromise here, let's, um, uh, yeah. if we can trace, Stacy, um, the meeting on the 23rd, which is the steering committee for the East Tower project, uh, let's make that a public meeting and a commissioner's meeting. Uh, so that uh, all, all of us can participate in that meeting. Uh, the other two uh, commissioners can ask all the questions they want because all the players theoretically will be on that call. Okay. Uh, and we can, uh, we can get questions answered and uh, we'll submit by tomorrow uh, for Mike Ditto, you know, both the education piece and the East Tower piece and um, tell Bill that we'll be able to uh, give him a, a clearer picture as soon as uh, the commissioners brought current on both projects. I think that's fair. I like that. Mike, I have a question for Mike Ditto. Do you learn more? And Mike, in your uh, professional experience, what do you think has a better feasibility of getting funding, something that um, is more geared towards education and public safety or um, historical revitalization? Great question. And I'm going to give you a kind of roundabout answer. Oh, great I'm not questions, to be. Mike. Good job. <laughs> yeah. We're <paying. laughs> I'm not, and I'm not, not trying to avoid your, avoid an answer on this. No, that's right. Um, it, really, it really depends because everything you just described are types of projects that have been funded. It kind of depends on the needs of needs at the time and, quite frankly, um, what your legislators are supportive of. Um, what will happen is between the governor, the Senate president, and the Speaker of the House, they'll all collaborate over the next month or so to try and build a capital budget that is good for the whole state of Ohio. And if they are looking at different projects, but your state legislator is not behind them um, or has concerns, they're not likely to fund those. But both of the things that you described over the last um, bit here on this call, I think both of those have an equal opportunity of getting funded depending on how they are structured and depending on community involvement and investment into the project. Match into these projects also counts. Thank you, that's a good answer. Um, I guess one question yeah. for Commissioner Kirshner real quick. Mike, so like as far as my questions go, I mean, I, I don't want to waste time. If you guys, if we're all meeting on the 23rd, I don't mind asking the questions or sending them out in an email. I don't want to blindside or have anybody be surprised. I mean, it might take a few days to gather some of these answers, but do you prefer I just write down what the questions are and give them to the group beforehand so they can have answers for them or research. Like I said, I don't want to blindside anybody, but what do you prefer? Yep. I, I think either. I mean, if I mean, the more work you do in advance, the better off you'll be. Um, and I also think that uh, it's best to have everybody have open discussion while the people that can answer the questions are sitting at the table. Just to expand on Mike Ditto's, and I, I don't want to skew this anyway, but I, I do want to say that um, history has shown me from a state capital campaign that there is a high uh, weight put on more than one uh, political subdivision be involved, in this case the city of Tiffin and the county of Seneca, and the private sector participating. I don't think I'm misspeaking here, Mike, but that certainly that certainly gives it a lot more uh, ability to be considered when that, that occurs. Through anytime that there's anytime there's local match from a municipality or a county or private investment, um, that does weigh heavily um, on the decision of the legislators. Um, in some cases, it, it varies from a, from project to project what that amount ever looks like. Uh, community participation in some factor in some faction does matter. Mike, did a last last question for you. Um, Business. Next. Okay. I just lost my train. Go ahead, Tony. I'm sorry. I lost myself in my notes here. Okay. 
gets worse, buddy. You can't read that. I'm going to give a great answer. You can forget it. It gets worse. Oh, I'm sorry. Did the, did the city of Tiffin or city of Foss story submit any projects? Not through me, uh, but I don't know that they would submit them to me since I work for the county, but I don't know if they've submitted anything. So they're right here. Representative Click, I'd be happy to ask. David, would you know? Uh, we know what we're being asked to put together to submit. So yeah, I, can, I can talk to that if you'd like. Uh, sure. I'll just be curious. Adam Gilmore, TSEP. Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, TSEP is going to be submitting the community kitchen project um, as well as the Ohio Partnership for Water and Industrial. Wa Water, Industrial, and Cybersecurity. It's quite a long name. Phase two. Phase two, which is. Uh, that was funded that, before. Yeah, so in 2018, that. Uh, was funded with a million dollars from the state capital budget. This is to continue and expand that program. Uh, Community Kitchen is also going to be, like I said, requesting funds, and those are the two projects that we have on our list right now. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, Commissioner, uh, so we will, uh, we will have a public meeting on Wednesday at 3 o'clock uh, 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 to discuss East Tower. Is that correct? Can we run it like a like a work session? Mm -hmm. It'll still be public. It'll still be. I think so. Um, so that way, it, it just won't be. I mean, I don't assume you guys will be ready to make a decision. We'll come back on Thursday and be able to make a yeah. decision. But if it could be, be a work session, since it's, I mean, we'll still do it public. Um, just doesn't have to be nearly as formal. Just information. I think that would help me out. I mean, I'd like that. Too. I'm going to set it up just like we do right. all these other meetings. So right. you don't even have to really sit up there. I mean, you could. We'll have probably people on Zoom on the screens. We'll be talking back and forth with that. I can Zoom, whatever. Okay. If the folks that are invited to that want to come here, they can. But usually we do those meetings via Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Mike, you'll be, uh, uh, you're going to submit our two projects. So keep, you know, uh, mm -hmm. getting ready. And right now we have a tie. <laughs> so um, we. Uh, <laughs> can we ask, Mike, Mike Ditto, what? What exactly do you need from us by tomorrow? I mean, are you looking for letters of support? Because I've got two drafts right now for the EMS program, one from the emergency services office and one from our office. Do you, do you want letters of support for those, for the East Tower project? What else do you need from us? Great question. Uh, any letters of support are very, very good. Um, well, I believe that, um, and that those would be very helpful. I'd like to, we'd like to submit to the legislature kind of the, the full package as much as we, as much data and information as we can for each of the projects. Um, Stacy and I have been going back and forth on a kind of a rudimentary worksheet that has some questions on there about who the contact is, right. how much state funding you're actually Jimmy, requesting, and what private yes. investment is coming in or what local investment is coming into the project answering those questions and then providing either plans and or letters of support all of that will be very very helpful feel free to inundate my email box <laughs> with things that you'd like to have included we'll tie a nice ribbon on it put it together for your final review commissioners and once you give the green light we'll send it sounds good thank you good. No mike anything else mike kirshner Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. No, I think that's good. And I will move on to uh, new business. Stacy. Okay. I have a request from Job and Family Services uh, putting 100000 into their contract services line. This is money needed for their 4D contracts. Uh, the next one I have on my list mm -hmm. is from uh, Job and Family Services. They need uh, 10000 into their equipment line. So it says additional money needed to purchase equipment and laptops uh, for the OMU program. Mm -hmm. uh, my next one is a uh, request from our office. This is following the discussion on capital projects, uh, I think two weeks ago, that you guys had initially said, you know, you wanted to move forward with the uh, countywide server. Um, so this is uh, the quote that we had had. Jake got me an update, um, and it's a little lower than the 160, but that's the number I had. So, um, so I got 160,000 in our, into our equipment line and the capital projects fund. So can you say that again? That sounded good. 
It's a little lower. <laughs> a little lower. Yeah. We don't usually hear that very no, often. I, I, I thought you said. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. Surprise, surprise. Uh, that's why we get this approved quick so I can sign it even if it's a mistake. Before the price goes up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the second one I have, uh, again, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, um, 120000 into the jail line in our capital uh, projects. We've got most of updated um, <clears throat> quotes from the sheriff. This included the 911 upgrade for the, um, uh, the desks and the setup for the, for the new equipment, uh, the bathroom shower replacement, and the front entrance concrete. Uh, handicap front retro fit all the ones that you guys had highlighted uh, in in the presentation last the uh, two weeks ago yeah um, that's just you know that's unfortunate because you would think that's a that would be a grant just a gimme grant you yeah know, an ADA entrance to the but we've tried so everybody you know we've tried and we tried and it's just a point we just we just have to do it. Yeah, I mean, and I, and I support doing it because it definitely needs it. So, um, and I will be forwarding you an updated. Um, Sheriff did supply us with an updated uh, priority list, so all the ones that was on his list, he put in priority yeah, so for can, us. Can, I'll get that to you. Get that to me. Yep. I'm kind of watching that. Yep. Two uh, questions, real quick. Um, yeah. As far as the contract services line, what is 4D? That is, um, gosh. In a nutshell. Uh, it's a court program uh, that they can get reimbursed for. It, it, it's a program that we get reimbursed from, I think, the state uh, that all the judges use, uh, Job and Family uses. It's just a, it's a very detailed uh, report they need done to submit to the state for reimbursement. A, a lot of areas don't do it because it's very very time consuming um, but all the judges and, and job and family services have done it for years and they they bring that money back to help offset the cost so and then for the equipment line for yep. the servers was that servers for multiple departments all the departments or particular ones all the departments so this will be one um, large server array array, array. array. I've learned that term <laughs> yeah and it will be able to house, um, you know, everybody in the Justice Center, our office, RTA's office, CSB. They can bring in uh, the Sheriff's office. It's, it'll be that robust and um, have the ability to do all the county with some space allowed. Handle everybody. Uh, yep. Thank and I think. You. Thank you. Uh, I think I missed one. Let's see, one for general fund. Contract services, the yeah. 51,000. Uh, yep, there it is. It just didn't go that far. Okay. So this one is, again, our request. This is, and, and I can get a different price. Um, this is for the backup uh, service for the server. Um, we get a much better price if we go three years. So this 60,000 is for a three-year contract for uh, warranty maintenance and everything on the servers. So uh, he gave me a yearly price, uh, two year, and he said if you can do a three year upfront, it saves us, I mean, almost $10,000. Is that what Buckeye IT recommended? Yes, then? yep, okay. yep. He said he would do one year at a time, but it, if we plan on doing it anyway, um, so that's what that was for. I, 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 always, I always wondered, does that, the clock starts when they install it or when we order it? when it's installed yeah. when it's ready to go right um, okay. what else do i have i have a resolution setting time date and place to receive sealed bids for the 2022 pavement resurfacing uh, contract number 2022-3 uh, this is set for april 14th 2022 at 10 15 a.m here at the commissioner's office I have a resolution authorizing the agreement with the Seneca County Health District uh, for 2022 medical services on behalf of the Seneca County Youth Center, effective March 1st, 2022, and for the president of the board to sign. And then I have a resolution approving the contract service agreement with Oriana House for the pivot on behalf of the Seneca County Common Pleas Courts 
uh, retroactive to July 1st, 2021. And those are all I have. Question on the um, pavement bids. Mm -hmm. Where do we publish that list at as far as, is, is it just going to papers? We it, it's required to do one in our local paper and then the engineer also puts it on his website. We usually put those on our website and um, that's where it's usually, usually grabbed from. Some of those construction is at the Dodge report, different things like that. It gets pulled in through there. But uh, the requirement is to put it in the local mm -hmm. paper with the largest circulation is what we're required to do. Okay. I wasn't sure if we were using multiple uh, avenues as far as advertising that one or not, but so uh, yeah. thank you. Usually they, they watch our papers like the Dodge, everything, because yeah, I'll start getting emails. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it so gets out there. Commissioner Kirshner, any uh, questions on new business? And I will accept the motion from you uh, when you're finished with your comments. Yeah. No questions, and I will so move. I will second uh, Mr. Kirshner's motion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Shuck? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. So, Stacy, we're good there. Yep. General public. Um, anybody? We good? General public. Adam, sure. you want to say something? So yes, looking at uh, the website, 47 days for Bill and I's race for the primary. So it's going to be an interesting uh, next few months here. Or I shouldn't say few months, a couple months. So uh, looking forward to uh, joining the team. Um, you know, my platform is very skinny. My motivation and my goals are to become part of the team and be, uh, uh, be part of the team. So uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Franker. Great news from Adams Township. I, you know, a couple weeks ago I said we we're going to have some stuff out and down the pike here. So at our meeting Monday night, uh, we signed the paperwork. We received a $60,000 grant from ODOT uh, for a culvert replacement. So we was the only township in the county. The next county closest to us was Huron County. They received some funding yeah. too. But we were uh, real fortunate. It was a great collaborative effort working with Engineer Zimmerman and his deputy uh, Dave Kinn on the process of you know, doing a survey work and uh, working with us through uh, uh, submitting an application along with uh, the trustees and our fiscal officer. And uh, that's the first time we've ever received an ODOT grant like that. So we're really uh, tickled to death. So as we proceed with that, that'll be out for bid for uh, uh, any, any this year. bid on. So yeah, it'll be yeah. Yep, good and soon. So, so yeah, yeah. good news. That was through the engineer's office, you say? What's that? You said that was through the engineer's office? Well, basically, they yeah, we submitted it, but they have to do the plans and stuff for the townships is what they do. Otherwise, you have to hire somebody to do that, but they, that's one of the services they provide to the townships is uh, doing a survey work for any projects we do within the townships, whether it's widening a uh, ditch or, or situations like this where you're placing culverts and stuff with it. So that's yeah, hats off to our county engineer. He does, uh, he does a lot of things that people don't know about, so. That was good. It's good news. Jimmy, any uh, public comment on your end, please? If I don't see anything in the chat right now, but you should be able to come forward and unmute yourself if you do have a public comment. I think we're good. There's no Okay. Uh, we'll motion hearing adjourn. no other motion comment. Adjourn. We have motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned. I think a second. <clears throat> I second. <laughs> <laughs>